Hi guys, I'm Yuva. A lot of you have been asking me here in the comments on YouTube, Yuva, can you make a video about the TOEFL speaking section? So here it is. Today is all about the TOEFL speaking section. I'm going to tell you what each task in the TOEFL speaking section is about, how you should answer the task in order to get a high score, and in the end you can download a template for the TOEFL speaking section below, memorize it and use it in the test. Let's get into it. Let's start with task number one, personal choice or advantages and disadvantages. The first task in the speaking section is the only free speaking task. This means you don't listen to a passage, you don't read a passage, you simply get a question and you need to answer it appropriately. And this question is always about your opinion. There are four different formats of this question. Now you may think, oh my god, there are four formats and I need a template for each of them. No, you don't. The great thing about the first task is that you only need two templates. Three of these formats can be answered in exactly the same way, so you only need two templates for these four formats. Let's start with the template for the personal choice question. In the personal choice question, you need to decide for a choice and you need to support your decisions by reasons. What you need to do is, first you state your thesis. This is your opinion. For example, you can say, I agree or disagree with the idea of doing something. After that, you make a transition from your thesis to your two reasons. You say, I feel this way for two reasons. This way you make a kind of signposting because you indicate that you're going to talk about your two reasons now. What you're going to do next is you give your first reason. It's a great idea to start your sentence with a linking word, for example, first, to indicate that you are talking about your first reason now. So you say first and then you give your reason. After that, you provide an example to support your reason. And this is really important because you want to make your reason a valid point. You want to say why your reason is important and to do this, you need to provide an example. So you say, for example, and then you go on giving your example. After that, you go on to your second reason. You give your second reason and you indicate that by starting with second. So you say second and then you give your second reason. After that, you provide an example to support your reason. We have used the expression for example before, so now we use a different expression to indicate that we have a broad range of vocabulary and show the listener that we can use that when talking about reasons. So you say, for instance, and then you give your example. After that, you should draw a conclusion that is based on your reasons. So you stated two reasons and you stated examples for those reasons. And now you want to say, okay, because of these reasons, I pick this or that choice. So you can say, for those reasons, I think, and then you talk about the choice you prefer. And here comes my top tip for the personal choice task. When talking about which choice you want to pick, this means when talking about your reasons and giving examples for these reasons, make sure that you use a broad range of vocabulary and that you structure your answer appropriately. This means use linking words such as first and second and use several words when giving examples such as for example, or for instance, let's go on with the second template for the task advantages, disadvantages. First, introduce the topic. You are going to talk about advantages and disadvantages of something. So you have to tell the listener that there are advantages and disadvantages of something. So you say, there are obviously advantages and disadvantages of, and then you go on. As you can see, I use the word obviously. I could leave that out. I don't need to say that. I could just say there are advantages and disadvantages of, and then go on. But 
I use it because this is a nice way of showing that I know such words and that I also know how to use them. So if you use such words, this makes you sound more natural and you show that you have a broad range of vocabulary. After your introduction, go on and talk about an advantage. So you can say, first, one evident advantage of something is that. As you see, I use the word evident. This is a synonym for obvious because I've already used obviously above, so I don't want to use that again. That's why I use evident. Of course, I could leave that out, but it's simply nicer if I use evident because I show that I know such words and that I know how to use them. Now you have given your advantage and now it's really important that you give an example to support your point. Start with for example, and then provide your example to support why you think this is an advantage. After that, you go on and talk about the disadvantage. So you could say, however, a main disadvantage of something is that. Again, you support this disadvantage by providing an example. And because we have used the expression, for example, before, we now use the expression, for instance. So you can say, for instance, blah, 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 and then go on with your disadvantage. In the end, you should give your opinion if you are asked to do so. So decide whether the advantages outweigh the disadvantages or not, and make a statement about that. For example, you could say, yet overall, I think the advantage of something outweighs the disadvantage of something, and therefore this is better. And here comes my top tip for the advantages, disadvantages task. When talking about an advantage and a disadvantage and providing examples, use words such as obvious, evident, or obviously and evidently to show that you have a broad range of vocabulary and that you know how to use these words when speaking about stuff. This makes you sound more natural and this is what boosts your score. Let's go on with task number two, the campus announcement. The campus announcement is a task of everyday life. And I think it's really easy to relate to the situation and also to talk about it because it's something that we all have experienced in some way before. We all have read an announcement before and we all have at some point in our lives talked about the opinion of other people. So this is a task we can relate to. First, let's have a look at what the task is about. In the second task of the TOEFL speaking section, you read a campus announcement, a letter or an article that speaks about a change. This passage talks about two reasons why the change is happening or it provides reasons for or against that change. After that, you hear a conversation between two students. One of the students gives her or his opinion and talks about whether he or she agrees or disagrees with the announcement. And the student explains why he thinks like that with two reasons. What you need to do is you need to summarize the announcement and this means you need to say what the announcement is about and the reasons the announcement gives and you need to summarize the opinion of one of the students. First, what you need to do is make a statement about the change that the announcement talks about. So you can say the announcement states that or according to the announcement and then go on and talk about what the announcement is about. After that, you state two reasons the announcement provides for this change. For example, you could say, the notice gives two reasons for this. When giving your first reason, you start your sentence with first and then you provide your reason. And for your second reason, you start your sentence with second and then you provide your reason. So this ensures that your answer is well structured. After that, you make a transition to the opinion and reasons of the student. And in this part, it is very important that you use the past tense because you listen to the opinion of the student before and this happened in the past. So you say the woman or man had a negative or positive attitude about the notice. After that, you make a transition why the person thinks this way. So you say he or she supports or opposes it 
for two reasons. You need to pay attention at this point. As you can see, we use the present tense. We say supports, opposes. We don't use the past tense. And this is because the student may still have that opinion. Actually, it's very probable that he or she still has that opinion. So you stick to the present tense here. This is the only time where you don't use the past tense in this passage. After that, you give the two reasons that the student provides to support his or her opinion. So you say, first, she stated that. Second, she pointed out that. It is very important here that you use different words for say. Don't say first he or she said that, second she said that. Use different words to make your answer more variable. If you don't know which words you can use instead of to say, have a look at my video about that. You can find the link below. And here comes my top tip for the second task. In the second task, you talk about the opinion of someone. And this is your chance to show that you know the words to express this. Don't always use the verb to say. Use different verbs instead. Say things like, he states that, or he points out, he emphasizes, he mentions, he suggests, he assumes, things like that to show that you know more verbs than just to say. This can really boost your score because you show that you can talk about something somebody said before in different ways. Let's go on with task number three general to specific. Guys, I think this task is really challenging in two ways. The first thing is that you need to read an article and you need to listen to a lecture and you need to understand the information of both passages. And what is extremely challenging is that you need to combine the information from both passages in a way that makes sense. And given the fact that you only have a very short amount of time to understand what both passages passages are about and to talk about that and combine the information and get everything sorted in your head, this is really challenging. So it's really important that you know what you are talking about in this task. First, let's have a look at what the task is about. In this task, you first read a short article. The article explains an abstract concept or a theory. And the idea of this article is to give you a general understanding of this concept or theory. You should write down a few keywords about this concept, for example, its definition, because this makes it easier for you to talk about it later. After that, you listen to a lecture. The lecture elaborates on that concept and provides details. Again, make a few notes because this will help you later when talking about it. Then you are asked a question about the lecture. And now the question is how you should tackle this task. What do the examiners want you to do? So the crucial thing is that both passages, the reading and the listening, talk about the same thing but they do this in a different way. And in your answer, you must combine the information from both passages. So you need to mention key points from both passages and it's very important that you establish a link between the examples given by the lecturer and the concepts in the passage. Now you may be a bit confused and that's totally normal because this task is really tricky. So let's have a look at the template and I'm sure it will become much clearer to you. What you first need to do is you paraphrase the definition or explanation that is given in the reading in order to show that you understand what the concept or theory is about. And guys, here it is very important that you don't use the same words from the passage. Use your own words to give the definition. What you can say is, the article discusses, and then you insert the topic the article is about, and defines it as, and here you insert your definition in your own words. After that, you should give some detail regarding this topic. So for example, you could say, the writer states that, and then you elaborate a bit on what the writer is talking about. After that, you state what the speaker is talking about, and you talk about his examples. First, you say, 
the lecturer discusses the role of, and here you insert the concept or theory the lecturer talks about, and provides an example or two examples, depending on how much examples are given in the listening. After that, you talk about the examples given by the lecturer, and you always introduce your example by saying, for example, or for instance, or he or she provides an example of. Now you have talked about what the article is about, you have talked about what the listening is about, and in the end you need to provide a conclusion. And the conclusion is where you combine the key points of the lecture with the ideas of the reading. You can say, consequently, based on the information in both passages, and then you go on and draw your conclusion. The word consequently indicates that now you give your conclusion and the expression based on the information in both passages shows that you now combine the information given in both passages. And this is exactly what you should do in this task. And here comes my top tip for task three of the TOEFL speaking section. Guys, especially in this task, it's really important that you have a template in your head because this task is really tricky. You need to understand the information in the reading. You need to understand the information the lecturer gives you. And sometimes this information is highly theoretical and difficult to understand. And in the end, you need to combine this information. So it's really important that you know, okay, first I'm going to talk about what the article is about. After that, I'm going to talk about what the lecturer tells me. And in the end, I'm combining this information. So keep these three steps in mind that you know what you are talking about so that you know how you can structure your answer. Let's go on with task four of the TOEFL speaking section. Guys, I think this task is not so hard when it comes to speaking because the template for this task is quite straightforward and easy to remember. But what is a challenge here is to understand what the lecture is about, because sometimes the topic in the lecture can be quite difficult, so it's important that you make notes when listening to the lecture. First, let's have a look what the task is about. In this task, you hear a lecture about an academic topic. The lecturer first introduces the topic and then he gives a definition. After that, he provides examples. He either gives two examples or he talks about one example that has two parts. So for example, he gives an example and talks about a cause and an effect. Let's have a look at the template and you will see that this is quite straightforward forward. What you need to do is, first you need to talk about the topic of the lecture and give a few details. You can say the lecture is about and then you insert a topic which is defined as. You have done two things here, you have stated the topic of the lecture and after that you have given a definition. And again, here it's very important that you use your own words and don't use the exact words that are given in the lecture when you are talking about the topic and defining it. After that you state the first example of the lecturer. You can say, first, the lecturer states that, and to show that this is about an example, you can go on and say, for instance. After that, you talk about the second example. You can say, second, the speaker mentions that, for example, and here it is very important that you use different expressions when talking about the example. So as you can see here, we have used the expressions for instance and for example, and we've also used different words for say. One time we have used states and the other time we have used mentions. And here comes my top tip for task number four of the TOEFL speaking section. Guys, I think the template is not the issue here. The template is easy to remember and quite straightforward. What is really challenging is understanding what the lecture is about. In order to talk about the main points of the lecture and the examples the lecturer gives, make sure that you write down a few keywords when listening to the lecture and make sure that you listen for these main points and these examples the lecturer gives. If you know, okay, 
I have to listen for examples the lecturer provides, I have to listen for a definition the lecturer provides. This will make it much easier for you to succeed in this task and if you write it down, you won't have any problems when talking about the lecture. That's it. These are the most important points for the TOEFL speaking section. You can find a template below. I also included examples for each task. Guys, I definitely want to give you what you're looking for. If you want to have a specific topic covered in this channel, tell me about that in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. See you next time. Bye-bye.